today, my topic today is let Jesus be big in you. My topic today is let Jesus be big in you. And I will take my reading from Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. Galatians 4.19 He said, My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. When Paul was writing this, the, the Galatian church was still in infancy. And not just that it was in infancy, they had kind of a problem. They started out in the spirit and then some, some Judaizing brethren came among them and brought them back into the law, into the flesh, into the works. So Paul came back to, to, to get them back on course. So he said, my little children of whom I travel in birth again. That is to say, he's kind of going through the birth travail again in them until Christ be formed in you. The dream, the passion, the hope of every teacher, every pastor, every spiritual mentor, whatever calling they have, is that Christ be formed in their mentee. In their congregation, in their members, in their followers, in their disciples, that Christ be formed. That is the utmost hope and expectation and prayer and wish and desire. But it is actually the Lord who does the forming by himself. Christ forms himself in you. It's not the work of a man. The job of the true minister is to help you to understand the word of God. That's why the Bible says we should honor them who labor in word and doctrine. So a minister that is not lazy, a minister that rightly divides the word of truth, a minister that takes his time to go inside the deep waters to fetch fresh water for his congregation, is a man that is worthy of honor, that is laboring in word and doctrine. So it is the job of a true minister to help people to understand the word of God, not just for understanding's sake, but to help enable it, help them build faith to operate that word. So you understand this so that you can you, you can now build faith. To operate the world according as He has given us all things that pertain to life in God in earth through the knowledge of Christ Jesus. The knowledge makes you to access those things that have been laid up for you already. You see, as it is written, I had not seen, ears had not heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things that God reserved for them that love Him. But the next verse says, But God had revealed unto them, them unto us by His Spirit, by which we are comparing spiritual things with the spiritual. He said, But the natural man understandeth not the things of the Spirit, because they are foolishness unto him. And they are spiritually discerned. So the knowledge of the Word of God. Understanding of the word of God helps you to receive supply of spirit and faith so that you become, you be able to operate the word, operate the word of God, operate the grace of God. Paul said to Timothy, let no man despise the grace that is in you. You are able to operate it. 
to the point that you become a blessing also to other people. He said, pay heed to these things. Meditate over them. Give yourself only to them that your profiting may appear. So the minister is only but a human conduit. And when the minister witnesses such transformation in the people, he rejoices. He rejoices. Because he makes the job easy and brings unparalleled joy. When Christ is formed continually, increasingly in the life of a believer. It makes the job easy. In 3 John chapter 3, 3 John chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, you see John writing to Gaius. He said, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. For I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Knowing the truth and walking in it are two different things. But walking in the truth is a proof that you know the truth. If you look at verse 6, you will see how Gaius, the testimony of the people, of Gaius, his charity towards the brethren. Gaius' way of manifesting that he has mastered the truth is his charity, his disposition to use his resources towards the brethren. It might be your own case, it might be some other way, it might be your willingness to serve. Some people have willingness to serve. Their motivation. Some people have the willingness to teach. Some people have a willingness to give. But either way, as Christ is formed in you, the result is showing. The result is showing. You can't afford to be static. There's no parking on the floor. Say, be instant in season and out of season. Say, the path of the joy shined brighter and brighter. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for an opportunity one more time to speak your word from my lips. To shine the light upon this little corner where you are bringing us together to train, to go out and be ambassadors, to go out and be missionaries, to go out and affect lives. Thank you for all the equipping that you have done and you are still doing. Thank you for this opportunity. It will be yet another good time. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, true Christianity <clears throat> is mostly a function of knowing who you are in Christ. <clears throat> and operating out of that consciousness. It's a knowing thing. It's not a doing thing. You know and then do. He said, if you know these things, what manner of man ought you to be? So it's a knowing first, not a doing. Religion is the other way around. Religion is a doing thing. It doesn't matter whether you know or not. So true Christianity is mostly a function of knowing who you are in Christ 
and operating out of that consciousness. Whereas religion, on the other hand, makes you an infant, a napios. Napios. You are, you are an infant needing napkin. Napios. The word napkin is from the word napios. Or making you a technos. That is a child, an apprentice, somebody needing elementary guidance all the time. So religion will either make you a napios, a baby needing milk, later in broker, nga, 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 they give you milk, chop, or make you an apprentice, somebody a rabble rouser, a techno, somebody that requires specific direction. Oh yeah, have you put the knot? Okay, put the knot. Have you, did you see the watcher? Take the watcher, put the watcher first, then put the knot. Then tight it, tight it at clockwise. Don't tight it anti-clockwise. Use panna, don't use plier. Those kind of level of guidance. That's what religion does for you. But grace brings you to maturity. The gospel, the true gospel, when I say grace, I mean the true gospel brings you to maturity. And when you are mature, the most potent gospel you preach is when people see that you yourself, you see Jesus in you. I say that again. The most potent gospel you can preach to anybody is when they see that you see Jesus in you. Because if you see Jesus in you, there's a way you will be, you you will present yourself. There's a way you, you there's there's a transformation in God when you see Jesus in you. In First Peter three fifteen, the Bible says, "But sanctify the Lord God in your heart." And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I would like to read it in the Amplified to bring it, bring it out a little more. He said, but set Christ apart in your heart. In your heart, set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your life as Lord. Giving Christ first place in your life as Lord. He said, always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confident assurance elicited by faith that is within you. He said, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Do it with gentleness and respect. And if you go to verse 16, it talks about, he said, having a good conscience that we are right, they speak evil of you. They will know in their heart that you are really of God. Having a good conscience. Looks like what we studied the last time, but these two are interwoven. So he's saying that you should have an answer, a ready answer. That answer may not be words. It can be your conduct. For all those who are doubting, when they see your confidence, when they see the way you, you carry yourself, they will know that surely something has happened. The Bible talks about Peter and John. He said, when the men of Sanhedrin saw Peter and John, after threatening them and everything, flogging them and all that. They said, whether it is better to obey God or to obey men, we cannot but declare the things our eyes have seen and our hands have handled. And the Bible said, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, being unlearned men, being ignorant fishermen, when they saw their boldness, their conviction, and their, their disposition 
to authority when it comes to things of the spirit. See, they took counsel, they took knowledge that they have been with Christ. So having a good conscience here in verse 16 is main emphasis to men that no skill of speech, not words, no amount of skill you exhibit, no amount of oratory, no amount of the work of an apologist you do rightly. We do the work of convincing people. If those life is inconsistent with what you are saying, if your life is inconsistent with what you are speaking, what you are apologizing about, what you are you are you are campaigning about, what you are you know sermonizing, if your personal conduct, personal conduct is not just only character, your their disposition, your status in life. You are ability to manage yourself. You can't be an ambassador of Christ and be a beggar. You finish preaching, then you follow them out and ask them for money for transport. People come to church and instead of hearing about Christ, the word they want to hear is that pastor is hurting. Pastor needs help. Please, well, everybody should bring contribute money for pastor's rent. A pastor has been thrown out from church. That is not. You have to acquit yourself. You have to acquit yourself. Manage yourself. Package yourself. Because you are carrying you are an ambassador. You are a man in authority. Whether you eat or you do not eat is not an issue that you come between the people and the gospel. You must have a way of tidying it up. You have to carry yourself. That is part of maturity. That is strong meat. Say strong meat. Belonged to them who are of full age. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised to know what is right from wrong. Part of it is being able to know where not to get yourself involved. Sobriety. Say the man of God should be sober. There are things, there are no good areas, there are red lines you cannot meddle with. It's the only when your speech and your conduct are in harmony can you say you have brought a testimony of Christ. Ecclesiastes 11.3 says, If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. What you are full of is what oozes out. If you are full of gossip, that is what oozes out. If you are full of fear, that is what oozes out. If you are full of pride, that is what oozes out. If you are full of cynicism, you are cynical of people or you are suspicious. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11 it says, and Paul is praying, he says, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent. That's exactly another way of putting what I just said before. Being able by reason of use to exercise your senses to know what is right and wrong. That's exactly what he say here. That ye may approve things that are excellent. That ye may be sincere and without offense in the day of Christ. 
being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. The King James is always very condensed. But let me try to read it with message version. Always I like it to be doing comparative. He said, Paul is saying the message version says, So this is my prayer that your love will flourish. And that you will not only love much, much, but well. Loving much and loving well are two different things. You can love somebody so much. But if you are not if the, if you are not giving out to that person, you have not that love is not expressed. So loving much and well are two different things. He said, learn to love appropriately. You need to use your head and, te and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent. <laughs> Thank God for this. Your love is sincere and intelligent, not sentimental gush. Some people have, before you know it, they are crying, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. 2021, I love you, Jesus. 2022, I love you, Jesus. 2023, I love you, Jesus. What have you done for Jesus? He said, love their love with sincere and intelligent, not sentimental gush. Live a lover's life, circumspect and exemplary, a life that Jesus will be proud of, bountiful in fruits from the soul, fruits from the soul, making Jesus attractive to all. I would like you to take a study of this version, this message version. Making Jesus attractive to all. Getting everyone involved in the glory and praise of God. You make Jesus attractive to your fellows. First of all, by you admiring Jesus yourself. Your level of admiration of Jesus is contagious. And the more you admire him, the more you receive the fullness, the flow, the supply. He said, and of his fullness have we received grace for grace. And of his fullness have we received grace for grace. John chapter 1 verse 16. So if you have received of his fullness, it should superfluously flow out of you. That's exactly what we're saying. Let Jesus be big in you. You will live like one who has that superfluity of knowledge, who has that inter interaction, who has that surplusity, if there's any word like that. The Bible gives us an assurance that we are complete in Christ. Do you know it? If you know it, do you live like you are complete in Christ or you are lacking something? You are lacking your eyes are all over the place. Seeing what other people have that you don't have. Are you complete? Rested? Content? He said, for godliness with contentment is great gain. Which means there is godliness without contentment. Words and opposite. Say, for godliness with contentment is great gain. Which means there is godliness without contentment. You see, of his fullness have we received. We are complete in him. Colossians 2.10 and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. When you, are, when you are gathering your house rent, and you are having difficulty, and the time is running against you, it's not enough for you to be rattled, because you are still complete in him. 
you are still at rest in him. When your child is sick, you are still at rest in God. When things are not working the way you are expecting, at first as you want them, you are still at rest because you are complete in him. In fact, that, that, that complete in him, if you, you can't get it fully until you go, if you back up to the pretext of Colossians 2.10, back up to Colossians 2, from verse, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 8, you will understand why, how he concluded with that. He said, verse 8 says, Beware, lest any man, Colossians 2.8, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and then deceive. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And that's exactly what religion does. Religion takes you from the security of your warm embrace with Christ. Pulls you out from Christ. Pulls you at a distance between you and the Lord. Pulls you at a distance from the Lord. And then starts showing you graduated steps. First of all, it will show you the things that disqualify you. That you are not that close as you are thinking that you are close to God. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. You are not even sanctified. You are not this. You are not that. You still eat in the dream. You have spirit husband. You are still quick tempered. You will disqualify you, put you at a distance, and then turn around and begin to recommend to you the steps, the graduated steps you have to take to begin to crawl back to God. You are looking at a man who went through that process. And I made up my mind that nobody will go through that except because he doesn't listen to me. That's why I say, for in him, it's you, you reject it. For the Bible says, verse 9 says, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So, knowledge will get you to realize that you are now one with Christ. And that you are not disqualified. For he has accepted you in the beloved, just as you are. First Corinthians 6 17 says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. You are joined to the Lord. Hebrews 2 11 says, For if both he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are now all one. He said, for this cause, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So the moment you are in Christ, you are fused with him. His fullness is in you. To the extent that you realize it. That's the, that's the funny thing. His fullness is in you. Jesus said to the woman at the wall of Samaria, he said, if you drink this water, anybody that drinks this man's water, will no, not only no longer taste, but the water I will give to him will be like a well of water springing up inside him to be bubbling, spring, bubbling, bubbling life. The life of God will be bubbling in you. To be a water springing up into everlasting life. John chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. And then Jesus repeated this same place in John 7 38. He says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, say, Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The pretty word there is not treco, it is a drop. He said, Flow, there has to be a flow. A flow means a surge. It shall flow 
flow. Let Jesus be big. Let, he, let there be a flow. Let there be a flow of, of his presence. If you have that presence, you are not faced. No matter the situation you find yourself, you are not, your head is not bowed. No matter the, the confusion that is thrown at you, you are not faced, you are not scared. Say, fear not, little flock. You are not faced. You are not scared. You are ready. Instant. I like the testimony of so many things about Paul. He is a bold minister. A bold minister. He's a man like you and me. When he came to the centurion, he was trying to talk to the centurion. The centurion was trying to Listen to him, and then a sorcerer came there and was trying to to manipulate, to draw the attention of the centurion away from Paul's ministration. And Paul looked at him, see you subtle animal, oh so full of mischief and subtlety. He said, will you not cease from being this kind of wickedness? He said, anyway, you will be blind for a season. You will be blind for a season. He pronounced judgment on him right there. The Bible says, immediately, things fell from his eye like scales, and he was beginning to look for somebody to lead him by the hand. He said, the centurion saw immediately and, was, and believed. At another time, he was traveling. This one, he was a prisoner. On Hancock, they were taking him to Italy. A soldier called Julius, a centurion, was, was put in charge of Paul to get him to Prom. And they put him in a ship called Alexandria. And they took off. And Paul, by word of knowledge, received an information. That this there's going to be a problem in this journey. That this journey is going to end up in a big calamity. He tried to talk to them, but the centurion did not listen to him. Prisoner. And what, what can a prisoner say? He chose to listen to the master of the sheep, the owner. Of course, he wants business, he wants to save, wants to collect his money and put it in the bank. That's what transporters do. So, the centurion listened to the owner of the vessel that everything was okay. And the Bible says, in the interim, when Paul was saying this thing, everything looked normal. The wind blew cool. Everything looked normal. And they set sail. But before long, the tempest, all that Paul said, Started happening. The Bible said for two days they did not see sunlight. They started throwing the things in the sheep into the sea by themselves. And everybody was at the point of giving up. But the Bible said at that point, at that point, what happened? Paul goes on. The Bible says, but after long, Acts chapter 27, verse 21. I'm reading from verse 21 to 26. He said, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, he kept quiet, he withdrew from them, was not eating, was not drinking with them, nothing, just was quiet. In the midst of all this tempest, all this cacophony of crisis, so he stood in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have listened to me and should not have left us. You shouldn't have loosed from Crete. That is, you shouldn't have traveled 
from Crete. And you to have gained this harm and this loss because you, you put this on yourself. You all brought this on yourself. If you listen to me, we won't be here. He said, but now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Why? Because there shall no loss of any man's life. There shall be no loss of any man's life among you. But we are going to lose the sheep. He said, for there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. I want you to mark those words. Whose I am, and whom I serve. That is an indication of a man who knows who he is. Knowing who you are. Whose I am, and whom I serve. He said, the angel has assured me, say, Paul, you will be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given to all the, all to you, all those that travel with you. He said, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe I shall be good, it shall be even as I am told. However, we must be cast upon a certain island. When he was saying this, they were still in the middle of the sea. But God had spoken to him by inner spirit. That they are going to anchor at a certain island. That is the presence of God. That's what growing the presence of Christ in you does. Growing the presence of Christ in you. That's, you can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. That's why it is important. Paul calls it a mystery that has been hid from the ages. But has been revealed unto us, which is Christ in you. The solution, the hope of glory means the answer to every situation. Christ in you. Colossians 1 27. He said it was a mystery to them. But I will repeat to us, Christ in you, the answer, the hope of glory means the answer, the, the panacea to every situation. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole world. In their time, it was Mount Zion. But in our time, it's Christ in me. That's why if you sing that song now, you are still singing Mount Zion. That means you don't know what you are doing. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of it. That's their own. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole world is my Lord that lives inside of me. Hallelujah. It's no longer a man's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, Christ in you, not in that man, not in the G.O., not in the man of God, not in me, but in you also. In you. You are also called. You are also blessed. You are also as holy as Christ right now. You can't be holier than you are now as a believer. You can't have more faith needed right now you can have your faith can increase but the faith you have now can do anything so don't be enjoy being a needy believer some people enjoy being a needy believer oh, i like to listen to him more when you finish listening to him ah you just go you be cool no Don't be a needy believer, needing help, needing counseling, needing everything. Don't remain at the level of requiring counseling every week. Ah, today is my pastor's counseling. 
I'm not saying people who need counseling should not go. But don't make it a practice. Some people think it's a sign of loyalty. I'm going for counseling. I'm going for counseling. To receive spiritual guidance like capsule. Sunday, Sunday medicine. Take it. They give you, they give you God like capsule. Knowledge, wisdom of God like capsule. You drink it. Next week you come back again. You drink another one. Next week. Uh, how did, why did you stop? Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to make some prayer today. Come back next week. You can How far are you going with that? Don't remain at the level of uh, I pay my tithe. I pay my tithe. You collect your salary of uh, 100,000. You take 10,000. You pay. You are happy. You have delivered. You are have, you have, you have in the kingdom. Even your 100,000 cannot do much. You need to double that 100,000. You need to collect another 100,000. Work for another 100,000. Work and pay for another 100,000. And bring the 300,000 to do the work of God. So that you collect 100,000 salary and you went and paid 10% time. And then you go home clapping for yourself. All the Muslims and the Hindu people that are building big temples. You think they are playing with their 10% tithe? They pay tithe. Yeah, tithe is important. Tithe. You don't tell their tithe. You say, you say, you say, you didn't say you should pay. You say you should give. This and that. We are not giving. We are not paying tithe. We are giving tithe. The story. Catholics pay no tithe, but they build big cathedrals. Every Catholic man or woman knows to give to the work of God. Nobody goes there to teach them tithe. They don't have tithe card in Catholic Church. We go there and see what they do. Sometimes we need to separate Pentecostalism from the doctrine of Christ. Too many Pentecostal things that are clashing. Practices that are clashing with the gospel. God's plan is for you to come of age, exercising your powers, exercising your rights and your privileges in Christ. That's what it's all about. Coming of age. You can be trusted as a signpost, as a pillar. And where people come under and they will see Christ manifest. Say so now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith on faith. Paul is writing to Timothy. Say the end of my charge is love out of a pure heart. A good conscience. The conversation and faith on faith. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. Let me read it in message. Another the message part says the whole point of what we are urging you is simply love. Love uncontaminated by self-interest. Some people love, but they are what they are looking for is their interest in you, what they are getting from that gratification. Not love of Christ, love of self, masquerading. As love of your organization. Not love, uncont love uncontaminated by self interest and counterfeit faith. A life open to God. Those that fail to keep to this point soon wander into dead ends. Dead ends. They set themselves up as experts on religious issue, but they haven't the remotest idea of what they are holding forth with. Such imposing eloquence. They are pa, 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 imposing eloquence. But they are not. They set themselves up as religious experts. But they are not having a grasp of what it entails. The core entails a lot more. To be a missionary entails a lot more.
when you exalt your admiration of Christ above everything, that is the best gospel you can ever preach. People will know that this man don't joke with his God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Rakusha Durugo Shuka Branda Kadusha Devot. Jehovah is your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jehovah is your name. Nayaka Sungo Shuka Branda Kamaka. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He was a mighty warrior. Great in battle. Oh, my God, you are so big. You raise a man and you give him everything that is needed. Father, look at our hands, Lord. Strengthen us, O God. Strengthen us, O God, even for this battle ahead. Give us grace, multiply it in every area. Every area we are lacking. Every area we need help. Every area we need strengthening, O God. Thank you, Jesus. Abraham da kanda 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 Marido goso go Abraham da kanda 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 lika do goso go Abraham do goso go Jesus This broadcast is sponsored by Grace and Full Missionary Association Gifma in short an international bible mission group We are so grateful for your audience today We welcome your comments and grief and any other forms of feedback you may have you can visit our website, www.gifma.us, or send us an email at spiritofgrace.gifma.us at gmail.com. If you need prayer or counseling, give us a call, 346-754-0720. Also, follow our Facebook page, Gifma, that's G-I-F-M-A. If you're also a gospel minister, you can register there and get mission support. And if you've been blessed by this programming, send us an email with your name and address where you will receive free DVDs, books, and other materials to keep you growing in grace. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless your bread and your water. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name.